I didn't want to go to see Ricky. Nope, 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 nope. I'd known him most of my life. And like everyone else who had known him a long time, I hated him. No, no, maybe, maybe that's a bit harsh. Let's just say I really, really, really disliked him. We'd known each other since grade school, but over the years, he had stolen and pawned my record collection, had sex with one of my girlfriends behind my back, a girl I really cared about too, and he still owed me the $200 I was foolish enough to lend him. So no... No, I didn't want to go see Ricky. But I did. You see, Ricky was dying. The hospice staff had begged me to come, so how could I say no? Besides, maybe I'd get my 200 bucks. Still, I wasn't prepared for what I saw when I reached Ricky's room. Ricky had been a big guy with a fat face, loud and obnoxious. But what lay in the hospital bed before me, hooked up to a multitude of wires and tubes, was a wizened, shrunken, sunken wreck, which wheezed, Got a cigarette? You can't smoke in here, I snapped. What about my two hundred? Ricky made a croaking noise, which might have been laughter. When it subsided, he managed another wheeze. I need you to do something for me. Here it comes, I said to myself. To Ricky, I said, what? I know I'm dying, he wheezed. I'm going to be cremated. I asked to be but what I need you to do is to take my ashes and scatter them on Stupid Street. Stupid Street. Stupid Street, one rung above Skid Row and the crummy thoroughfare where Ricky and I had grown up. The answer is no, I said without hesitation. But you have to. Why should I? Because... Everyone else already said no. Well, that was Ricky's logic for you. So that's how I ended up on the roof of the apartment building I'd lived in when I was growing up on Stupid Street. Ricky had lived across the way with his old man, a drunk, in a dumpy house that was practically falling down. His old lady had gone off years ago, and nobody knew where she had gone, <laughs> and nobody blamed her either. Anyways, 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 we'd sit up on the roof, talking trash, getting high, and looking down on the people down below, the stoops, the stoops who lived on Stupid Street. Of course, uh, we were stoops ourselves, a sobering fact that Ricky greatly resented, as he resented the way the rich kids in town looked down on us. I didn't like it either, but it was something you had to let go of. But Ricky hadn't let it go. You want to get back at all those dirty bastards for putting us down all those years? <sighs> then scatter my ashes. Ricky, I'd rather have my 200 bucks. Oh, oh, you'll get it. You'll get it. So now I was up on the roof of the old building with a plastic urn full of ashes and Bryce, another guy who'd grown up with Ricky and another guy who couldn't stand him. I don't know why you agreed to do this, Bryce chewed. Ah, there's no harm in it, I said. 
Stupid street ain't dirty enough without spreading around some clown's ashes. Well, I was tired of listening to Bryce Carp, so to put an end to it, I tossed the ashes up into the four winds. And two things happened. One, a cloud of ashes caused Bryce and I to choke and cough, and two, a tremendous clap of thunder rent the heavens. Seriously, rent them. An almighty voice, Ricky's voice boomed. Thanks, man. Revenge is sweet. We stood there, stunned for a moment. Then Bryce said, That was his voice, eh? Yup. What did he mean by revenge? How the hell should I know? While all this was going on, two of the snotty people that Ricky hated so much were speeding down the highway in a Jaguar. A Jaguar. A Jaguar convertible. And were just passing the exit for Stupid Street when Marianne said, I hear Ricky died. Who cares, Tom grunted. Well... We've known him since we were kids. Ricky was a loser. A complete loser, Tom snapped. I bet he died broke. And at that precise instant, the pair were enveloped in a swirling cloud of grit, a swirling cloud of ashes, and Tom found himself totally blind, totally blind while traveling at 90 miles per hour. He never saw the transport truck, but he still managed to slice under it. Marianne and Tom were decapitated. Over the next few weeks, there were a number of mysterious accidents in town, some fatal, and they all had a certain common denominator. They all involved people Ricky hated. Weird, eh? Must just be coincidence. At least that's what I thought at first, until I received a call from the lawyer handling Tom's estate. It seems Tom had left me a small amount of money for a past favor. <laughs> oh, and the amount? $200. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Believe my story? Well, you must. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix Here, that's P-X Here, while the music was the classic Lightless Dawn by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. Thanks for listening.